Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and back there is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. This is another video in our series on logical fallacies and in this video we'll be looking at the appeal to authority fallacy. The appeal to authority fallacy occurs when people insist that a claim is true simply because an authority or expert on the issue said it was true without offering any other supporting evidence. It is important, however, not to forget the fallacy fallacy, which I covered in a previous video. The fallacy fallacy occurs when someone assumes that if an argument contains a logical fallacy, then its conclusion must be false. But this is not always the case, and it particularly isn't the case when someone succumbs to the appeal to authority fallacy. Because if someone is genuinely an expert or an authority, there is a reasonable chance that what they're saying is correct. This is a photo of my little brother and me just after we got off the plane in Manchester, England in the middle of winter. If you look at my brother's t-shirt, you will see that it mentions he is a mechanic. And he is, in fact, a very good mechanic. So if something goes wrong with my car, I'm going to ask my little brother to have a look at it. And I'm going to believe what he tells me is wrong. If Joe Blow down the pub tells me something else, I'm not going to believe him. I'm going to dismiss what he says because my brother is an authority and Joe isn't. In doing so, I may be committing a logical fallacy, but most likely I would be right to do so. However, if I want advice on the most appropriate clothes to wear in Manchester in winter, I'm not going to ask my brother because being an expert in one area doesn't automatically make you an expert in another area. And as is clear from the photo, he definitely doesn't have a lot of expertise in this area. And this leads me to where the appeal to authority fallacy more commonly rears its ugly head. And that is the appeal to false authority. An appeal to false authority fallacy occurs when an alleged authority is used as evidence in an argument when the authority is not really an authority on any facts relevant to the argument. In some cases, the false authority may have expertise in another area that isn't actually relevant to the argument being discussed. In other cases, they may be claiming expertise that they don't actually have. And I'll show you some examples of both of these. This comment was left on a recent video of mine, which presented data showing that the claims by some grifters that vaccines were causing excess deaths couldn't possibly be true. Thousands of grifters with very high degrees, you are the liar. Some liars are out there, yes but many highly degreed are admitting vaccine damage. You must be highly paid off for your lies. Now, of course, having a high degree doesn't mean that your degree is remotely relevant to understanding vaccine science. For example, your degree could be in English literature. So this is an appeal to false authority. This comment was left on a video I made ages ago about a dodgy website called Ivan Meta, which falsely claimed to have performed a meta-analysis of ivermectin studies. Dr. Tess Laurie has done a Cochrane review on ivermectin, and she says it's a miracle drug. Now, as it happens, Dr. Laurie has done Cochrane reviews in the past, but they were within her area of expertise which is obstetrics and gynaecology. She has no expertise in infectious diseases. This is what Dr. Laurie claims was a Cochrane review of ivermectin, 
And you will note that the journal has actually issued an expression of concern about the article. However, even before the expression of concern was issued, it was clear that she hadn't done a Cochrane review because Cochrane had actually done their own review and came to a very different conclusion. Not only that, the authors of the Cochrane Review actually wrote an article explaining the flaws in the article co-authored by Dr. Laurie. And this is just a little of what they said. Brian et al. pooled heterogeneous patient populations, interventions, comparators, and outcomes. In other words, they compared apples and oranges serving a large bowl of colourful fruit salad. And if you want to know more, I cover it in my video on Science Mistake Made by Ivermectin Fans, Part 1. Now, of course, there are thousands and thousands of people that are put forward as authorities whose expertise is actually in a different area. I can't mention them all because if I did, this video would go for hours, but I will mention one more. And that is Dr. Peter McCulloch who is a well-known cardiologist who has made a number of unfounded claims about both ivermectin and vaccines. He obviously has a lot of expertise in cardiology, but that doesn't make him an expert in infectious diseases. Now, I can't show you exactly what he has said because, as you can see, he has blocked me on Twitter. This is despite the fact that I have never had any interactions with him whatsoever. Yet another big name spreader of misinformation who has felt the need to block a virtually unknown scientist like me. So that's one type of appeal to false authority. The other type is when people falsely claim someone has expertise which they don't actually have. So let's look at a few examples of this. This is yet another comment left on one of my videos. Dr. Robert Malone, creator of mRNA, disagrees with you, and I take his word over a YouTube scientist any day. Now, of course, mRNA first evolved billions of years ago, so clearly Robert Malone didn't create it. Now, it is true that he did do some early work that was important to the development of mRNA vaccines, but he did not invent them. No single person did. 484 individuals appear on 68 publications detailing the development of mRNA vaccines. Malone is an author on two of them. The other amusing thing about people who are claiming Malone invented mRNA vaccines is often these are the same people who are claiming development of the vaccines was rushed. They seem unaware that the research he did was in 1987, rather a long time ago for something that was rushed. And if you want to know more about the development of mRNA vaccines, I'll provide a link to this article about it in the video's description. Also, if you'd like some details on why a lot of what Malone says is misinformation, Dr. Dan Wilson from Debunk the Funk has made a very informative video about it, and I'll provide a link to that as well. A more recent actor on the misinformation stage is Pornima Wa, who has appeared in a number of videos like this one, which has the following description. Pornima Wa, two PhDs in virology and immunology, 20-year career as a lab researcher and scientist, destroys the COVID scam with proof in languages even a layman like me can understand. Who benefits? Big Pharma and its owners. Not shareholders. No idea what that means. Gates, Fauci, whom she calls criminals, using words like fraudulent, deliberate, planned and premeditated. Pretty hard-hitting stuff, eh? Only problem is, she doesn't have the credential she claims. A reporter decided to ask the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine where she 
claims to have got her two PhDs from. This is what they said. Nobody by the name of Purnima Wa has obtained a degree from our institution. So, yet again, another fake authority. Another common example of appeal to false authority is when people point to those who may have some relevant expertise in an area, but whose opinion differs from the accepted science followed by the majority of experts in the area. If we go back to the example of my brother and my car, if instead of Joe Blow down the pub disagreeing with my brother, it was a dozen mechanics, I might ask my brother to provide some evidence to support his claim. This is a tweet by Toby Young. Over 400 doctors, scientists and professionals from more than 34 countries this morning declared an international medical crisis due to diseases and deaths associated with COVID-19 vaccines. Now, 400 probably sounds like a lot until you consider there are millions of doctors, scientists and professionals in the world. So 400 is a very small proportion. However, the 400 number is now out of date because the people behind this declaration have started a petition and have been gathering signatures. They explain the rigorous process they go through to verify the signatures here. Please remember there are three different spaces to sign depending on your profession. It is very important to specify if you are a doctor or scientist, a healthcare professional or other professions with another type of profession. It is necessary to fill in the spaces correctly. Be patient. Your signature will only be public after 48 hours since we confirm all signatures every day. We ask for responsibility to carry out the signature correctly and thus maintain the credibility of this work for the benefit of all. Well, that certainly sounds like a rigorous screening procedure. Let's have a look at a few of the credible experts who have signed the declaration. Let's see, there's a Dr. Bigus Dickus from Italy, mm -hmm. Dr. Fu King Garbage from China, mm -hmm. Dr. Furin Cleavage from the UK and Professor Mike Yeadon's jockstrap from Mongolia. Wow, they must be happy with that. A professor. Interestingly, there's also quite a few people called Q. There's a urologist called Hugh G. Rection from Chad, Dr. Huge Ass from Wales. Dr. Hugh Janus from the UK and Dr. Hugh Janus from Japan, but spelled differently from the other Hugh Janus. Interesting coincidence. Well, it certainly looks like they have some credible experts there, but personally, I would like to have some more details on how they determine whether the people signing the declaration are legitimate experts or not. I mean, how do we know that Dr. Biggis Dickus is really a urologist? As we know from the number of subscribers that some people spreading misinformation get, there is no shortage of non-experts who will believe any old rubbish. One more thing that is worth mentioning is that occasionally what is believed by the majority of doctors and scientists is shown to be wrong when new evidence becomes available. An example of this is Barry J. Marshall and J. Robin Warren, who discovered that the bacterium Heliobacter pylori played a role in gastritis and peptic ulcer disease. Prior to their research, it was mainly believed that these conditions were caused by stress and excess stomach acid. And indeed, when they first presented their research, it was not received favourably. But they continued to do more research, as did other scientists and doctors, until the evidence was clear. And they went on to receive the Nobel Prize for Medicine and Physiology in 2005. 
And now virtually all doctors and scientists accept the role of H. pylori in gastritis and peptic ulcer disease. Now, a lot of people will point to this as an example of why we should actually believe the mavericks and not the majority of scientists and doctors who disagree with them. But it's important to remember that Dr. Marshall and Dr. Warren performed experiments to provide evidence to support their hypothesis. They didn't just offer unsupported opinions. Finally, I'd like to address something that seems to come up a lot in the comments. I do get quite a few accusations of attempting to appeal to authority because I introduce myself as a scientist in all my videos. This is not an appeal to authority. The main reason I do it is to make it clear that I'm a scientist as opposed to a doctor or physician because a lot of people make the mistake that someone with a doctor title is a physician when in fact it is a title given to anyone with a PhD. Likewise, when I introduce Cindy as a dog, this is also not an appeal to authority. Although dogs have a better sense of smell than humans, I'm not saying this gives her any expertise in sniffing out misinformation. I'm just pointing out that she's a dog. More importantly, Cindy and I don't present our opinions in our videos. We present what the science and data says, and we provide links to our sources in our videos descriptions. And this video is no exception. You'll be able to find links to the sources I've mentioned in the video's description. But if you do see people who are actually succumbing to the appeal to authority fallacy, particularly the appeal to false authority fallacy, please share this video with them. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee. I really appreciate your support. I will be making more videos in the future looking at logical fallacies. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.